A reciprocal function is 1 divided by some function of x. In this video we'll look at the key features of reciprocal graphs and how to sketch the graphs using three examples, two where the denominator is a parabola and one where the denominator is a cubic. So let's dive into the first example. So if we consider the parabola x squared minus 4, it's got a vertex at 0, negative 4, x-intercepts at plus or minus 2. We'll also just put a few more points in there to help with our reciprocal. So the first key feature is our vertical asymptote. That occurs whenever the denominator is 0. So in this case when x is 2 or negative 2, um, as the parabola approaches zero, the reciprocal is going to approach something very, very large, either positive or negative, so we'll get vertical asymptotes. The horizontal asymptotes occur because as the parabola gets very, very large, the reciprocal gets very, very small and will approach zero. So that would happen both to the right and to the left here. So we'll approach zero and have a vertical asymptote at y equals zero. Next one, stationary points are going to occur at the same x values when the denominator has stationary points. So we could prove that using calculus, but even just looking at it intuitively, when that parabola has a minimum, its reciprocal is going to have a maximum. That's at 0, negative 1 quarter, and for this graph that's also the y-intercept. There won't be an x-intercept for a reciprocal graph because there are no solutions where y equals 0. We've already shown that y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. The last point is about where f and its reciprocal would intersect each other. That would occur when y is equal to 1. So in this case, if we solve x squared minus 4 equals 1, we'll get positive root 5 and negative root 5, so that would be where the parabola would cross its reciprocal. Okay, so feel free to watch that again if you wish, but otherwise we'll jump into another example. So again, the denominator is a parabola. To find the vertical asymptote, we let that parabola be 0. Uh, we can factorise this in order to solve for x, and we get two solutions. So those will give us the locations of our vertical asymptotes. We can draw those in first at x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to 3. Now for the horizontal asymptote, because the denominator is a parabola, it will approach infinity on both sides, so we'll have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. For the stationary points, we're looking for the stationary points of that parabola. Because we've already found the x-intercepts, the easiest way is probably just to take the halfway point between those two x-intercepts. That's going to be negative 1, and we can then calculate the y value just by substituting in negative 1 to get uh, negative 1 over 16. For the y-intercept, we let x equal 0. Do a substitution, we'll get negative 1 over 15. And then we can sketch in our shape, approaching the asymptote on both sides. For the rest of the graph, so to the right of the asymptote, we can substitute another point if we like. So when x is equal to 4, we can calculate that the y value will be 1 over 9, and then our shape is going to be approaching both asymptotes. And we'll get a symmetrical shape on the left side of the graph. And there it is. So this third example, we have a cubic on the denominator, but actually it's worth mentioning that this function is technically not a reciprocal function. Uh, we have a reciprocal function inside it, but then we've got this plus 1 on the end, which is translating the whole thing one unit up. Okay, but the process is the same, so we find the vertical asymptote by letting that denominator be 0, and we can solve that to find... We only get one vertical asymptote in this case when x is equal to negative 1. For the horizontal asymptote, rather than y equals 0, it's going to be y equals 1, because although the reciprocal part approaches 0, we then have that plus 1 on the end, which shifts everything up. 
for the stationary point, that cubic x cubed plus 1 is going to have a single point of inflection at 0, 1. So for our reciprocal graph would have an inflection point when x is equal to 0, and the y value would also be 1, because 1 divided by 1 is 1, but then we're going to shift everything up by 1 unit. So we're going to get an inflection point at 0, 2. And that's also going to be our y-intercept, okay? So when x is equal to 0, y is going to be 2. That's our y-intercept. For the x-intercept, and we are going to get an x-intercept here, if we let our function be equal to 0, rearrange and solve for x, we find that the x-intercept is the cube root of negative 2. So with that single x-intercept, and the asymptotes there, we can sketch in the shape for the left half of the graph. The right half is a little trickier because of our inflection point, our stationary point. So if we find one more point, say when x is equal to 1, that will help. And as a reminder, that stationary point must be an inflection point because it came from the inflection point for the cubic x cubed plus 1. So it must be flat there and the shape of a stationary inflection point. Now having to pass through that other point and approach both asymptotes, we can complete the shape of our graph. Okay, so that's it, reciprocal graphs. Feel free to go back and watch any of those examples again. If you feel like you've got it, make sure you do some practice for yourself.